Hey, how are you doing? I'm pretty sad. <laughs> Why you're laughing then? Well, you told me to smile when we are recording a video, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, what happened then? Tell well, me. I'm not happy because I'm always feeling that there's a final piece I'm missing in my machine learning project, which is the consumption layer. I mean, I usually deploy my models as a REST API, which is not the easy way to consume the model. So I need to create a user interface or an application as a consumption layer for my machine learning project, uh, which I am missing that part. That's definitely true. Then create your own user interface or application over your machine learning model. That's the point. Easy. I can't because I'm, I'm not an application or user interface developer. That's, that's the problem. You don't need to be. I mean, you don't need to. Just there are some low code solutions you can create your user interface or application. That's it. Oh, cool. Then how? You can use Power Apps to create your user interface over your machine learning model. Do you want to check? Sure. Then... Let's go! Hello everyone, this is MG and welcome back. In this video, we are going to see how we can use Power App as a low-code solution to create a user interface as a consumption layer for the machine learning model that we have trained and deployed using Azure Machine Learning. Let's check it out. So before we go to Power Apps and we create our interface, we certainly need to have a model get trained and deployed. Here I'm using Azure Machine Learning. So if you have seen previous videos of mine, I have already talked about AutoML, how you can create your own model, get trained with automated steps that you don't even need to code, or some other ways in general that how you can train a model using Azure Machine Learning. But here what I'm doing is I'm using Designer, which is just a drag and drop or low code solution that you can get your model trained and even deployed. So if you go to your Azure ML, as you can see, this is my Azure ML workspace. And on the left side, you can see the icon called Designer. If you click on it, you'll see this part that you can create your pre-built components, create your pipeline, or even there are some already defined ones, you can have them and customize further. So the one that I created, that's actually an Azure ML data set sample that talks about auto ML, automobile price prediction. So there's a data set already available. That's an open data set. You can grab it from the data site here. You can see there are some other data examples. You can grab them. And some of them already mined that I registered them before. So we're just searching for automobile price data you will see that it will be here you can just drag and drop it so all these components here can be just drag and drop as is to create end-to-end -end my machine learning pipeline so the first thing that i dragged and dropped was the automobile price data with right click and click on pre preview data i can see a quick overview of what are the features here you can see the fuel type the make of the card normalized Losses, aspiration, number of, do number of doors, body style. These are some sort of features that is needed to get the price of that given car. So definitely for pre-processing, you might need to select some columns, drop some of the columns. So for doing so, you just need to search select column. And then you'll see that it will be up here here so i dragged and drop it i, I pay, put paste it here and just with just clicking on these two circles i can make a connection between these two that means the automobile price data i want to select some columns of that data and if i double click on it you can see how i am including or excluding some of the columns here clicking on edit columns you can see i'm saying that include all columns but exclude based on the column name column name and this is the column that i want to drop and that's it 
and then I want to clean some missing data so again I type clean missing data here I was able to find it and drag and drop it here and connect it to the previous box and if I double click on it this is what you will see that hey I want to have this applied to all columns and if there's a missed data remove the entire row there are different ways to clean but this is what I have chosen and then splitting the data I type split data here then I drag and drop it let me actually do it split data oops sorry for typo yeah there you go so you can just drag and drop it and you can see how I make the connection but I don't want to do it again because I already did that's here and why I clicked on the left side and connected to split data because this is the cleaned outcome this is the ignored part so I, I want to have the clean part not the part that is dropped to get inputted to split it for training and testing so I put 70% for training which comes here and 30% for testing which comes here at which is the output of the split data and that's why for the output what I have been doing is I am connecting the training data to train model but I have to say what is the algorithm I'm going to train model so I chose linear regression I just simply type here linear regression but there are lots of more other machine learning algorithms you can just search the names and drag and drop them here and then after training the model which is linear regression with the training data which is 70 percent of the split data then you need to score the model so for scoring i need to type a score model here i drag and drop it connecting to the train model and of course we need the test data to score the model so i'm going all the way connect to that 30 percent that we split it which was for testing after scoring, we need to evaluate the model. I just type evaluate model here, drag and drop, and connecting the final outcome to evaluation. That's it. When I was done, I clicked on submit, and what happened? If I go to pipelines, I see there is a run that I created. So I, that's okay, I don't wanna save anything. And there you go. That was completed successfully because I clicked on submit and you can see all the boxes ran properly with the green sign beside that shows I did a good job. So afterwards, after the run was over, um, you can actually see some results. Let's say I want to see how the model did the prediction um, for the test data. So I will right click on the score model, preview data, score data set and you can see he, here is the score data if i scroll all the way to the last column this is the actual price of the car and this is what our train model got uh, predicted you can see some of them are very close some of them are slight differences and if you want to see how the model is performing i mean the evaluation metrics remember we have an evaluation step so right click on this one preview data evaluation results since that's a regression model, you will see some regression related metrics got appeared here to give us a better understanding of how the model is performing. This is for the training. Now we need to deploy the model as a real time endpoint, let's say over a container, over a Kubernetes, but we need to create a deployment pipeline, right? This is a training pipeline. The good news is you don't need to manually create a deployment pipeline again, even using designer or drag and drop. What you need to do you can see here after completing this tab will be appear that I can create the real time or batch inference. If I click on real time, which I did before, I'm not going to create another one again to save the time, but I just want to show you how I did it actually. You can see it automatically created a real time inferencing pipeline without necessarily me dragging and dropping these components. You can see the web service got here this is the input that when you call an api and this is the output of that api endpoint which is a web service output and the rest all those transformations that we did gonna be appeared here as well so you just click on submit to submit now this inferencing pipeline which is different than training pipeline that we did so the same thing you click on submit you go to runs and you see that the submission is completed let me show you what happened and the submission was completed that was the real-time pipeline that i submitted and you can see everything worked successfully that's the time now i want to deploy this 
as a real-time endpoint using this real-time inferencing pipeline. After completing, you'll see a tab, deploy, click on it, give it a name or replace it with an existing one, and I chose container instance and I clicked on deploy, that's it. And let me show you what happened when I deployed it. I go to endpoints, there's one called, I think, automobile, that was the name I chose. And there you go, it is telling me that my REST endpoint is here. This is the endpoint of my uh, deployed model. If I go to consume tab, you will see that the endpoint is here and also there are some keys. These keys are needed to authenticate to be able to have permission to call this REST endpoint and give the receive the prediction for the price of that car. So make sure you copy this REST endpoint and also you copy one of the keys here let's say i'm gonna copy the primary key we need to add these two when we create our power app solution that was about the model part model training deployment and let's go to the power apps if you just search power apps login you log in based on your credentials and this is what you will see um so on the this is actually my power app i signed in this is the environment that i have might yours might be a bit different based on the number of the solutions you have or the environment that you have chosen but this is mine and there is already a created power app solution for this automobile price car prediction so you don't need to create all from scratch and i add the link of that github to the video description that you can open it that describe all the steps of this video and also the the power app zip file that has been created you just need to import and the app is here ready for you this is what exactly what i'm going to do so you click on solution on the left side you click on import and you need to import the power app created before so what is a solution solution usually is a zip file that lets you transfer the power apps that you have created that zip file contain all the artifacts needed to recreate this user interface and application right so again, I'll add the GitHub link. It's there, you download it as a zip file, you already did it. And if I click on browse, that's actually here. Automatic integration with Power Apps. I clicked on it, clicking on next. It is telling me that the publisher is Microsoft Demo. That's a sample of the description. And I click on import, I did it. I'm not going to do it again, but if you click on import, this is what you will see. ML Power Apps, Power Apps car price sample. You click on it to see what are the components of this app. You can see there are mainly two components that has been created for this app. You have a Canvas app, which is actually the user interface, and also you have a cloud flow. That flow actually shows the process of how we receive the input from the user, how we pass it to the Power App, uh, how we receive the input from the Power App or the user interface, then how we call the model, how we get the prediction, and how we show it to user interface. So click on cover car price prediction flow on the three dots here. Then click on edit a new tab because we need to edit this before we run the application. And here is what we need to edit. So this is the flow of our application, right? We receive inputs from the user, which basically going to be the features to receive and then predict the price, right? What is the brand, the model, the make of that car? What is the number of the doors, the body style, so on and so forth. So these are coming from a user interface and then we should call the ML real-time endpoint we deployed, which is here. But this flow should know which deployed model we need to call and it needs to authenticate. So what is the key? Remember we copied the key of the real-time endpoint. This is the place you need to input. So click on ML API key, put the value of that key as a string here, and then your real-time endpoint model has an endpoint URL. So we copy that from Azure ML and paste it here. It should end with dash score. And afterwards, okay, let me close this. That's it. So this flow technically use those credentials you just provided with the prediction inputs 
that are coming from our user interface. The user will put the inputs from the user interface. We're going to check that user interface shortly. But if I double click on it, here are some of the information that we will ask in Power Apps. Hey, what is the name of the model, the card, brand, so on and so forth that we need to do the prediction. So we, we have it as a JSON because this should be a JSON to get to, to the API of the deployed model. Then we call that ML model, we invoke it. If there's input in the error in JSON file, if there's a there's an error in the input, we create that. We call the model. If not, we call the model. If there's an error in the predicted value, we have that already retrieved back to the user interface. If not, this is gonna be the place that we will have actually the, the predicted price, which is coming from the body of that JSON file as a results, and you can see from scored labels, we put the first index, which is the predicted value to show it to the Power Apps or the user interface that we have created using Power App, which we're gonna go through that quickly. So in a nutshell, two things you need to change. Just put the key and the endpoint of the model that you have deployed, that's it. Now coming back to this solution that we imported, we just edit this flow and the card price predictor is actually the actual user interface that has been created using Power Apps. Let's edit this one. There is no edit needed for this one, just to show you how it has been created. Uh, very quickly, let's have a quick walkthrough. So basically here in Canvas, in Power Apps, with a low code solution, you can create your own sort of dashboard or user interface here. You can see each of these components, for example, these are the features that we need to choose to predict the price. What is the fuel type? Gas diesel what is the aspiration standard turbo so if I click on these design ones you can see this one is a button what about this one this one is a drop down and here are the items or what about this one let's click on that this is a list box so all these components has been chosen in canvas and you can see so you can change that the color of them the size just pretty I would say custom um pretty casual user interface design definitions and components you need to have and this is already connected to that flow that means after finalizing my design if i click on play let's say i want to predict a bmw car name with the fuel type gas and or let's see fuel system 2 bbl as an example and let's do the prediction you can see it's calling my endpoint and there you go i just got the price predicted using the model we deployed in azure ml and now we have a user interface instead of calling that endpoint in a python application or in any application through code here i have a user interface that i can interactively test the model and even productionize the model that i have deployed let's change it to actually to mitsubishi and um let's check the engine location to rear instead of front and uh, what else let's change the engine size to 140 i'm i'm not an expert in cars i'm just randomly changing these variables here and do the price predict and there you go i don't know how old is the data set if that the prices are reasonable with the current time that i'm recording or not but regardless of the, the predictions but this is basically the flow how it works and now you can see we have a user interface working properly. When the world says give up, hope whispers, try one more time. Wow, impressive. Yeah, that was pretty impressive. Um, see you next week.